welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to defeat the Witherstorm in Explorer's Eve. And this is part two, which will be covering phases five through six, which is surprisingly a lot. So without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. Since we're now in the overworld as a result of leaving the Twilight Forest, unsurprisingly, we now have a bunch of things we can do. So you can see, first off, jungle temples. Of course, a lot of structures have been revamped through the use of many mods. So of course, exploring them will be quite interesting. With some night vision, you can see how expansive they can be, since there is both a spider den and a jungle temple in this location. Not to mention, more explorer's treasures can be found, but of course, beware of traps. Since these structures, now being revamped, are quite a bit more difficult. Instead of running into a jungle temple, you run in, and then you they get a shield of a mile, and then get an echo shard, and then get incinerated. You know, all fantastic things to happen all at once. So generally, what you want to do is be careful while raiding structures. And another thing, well, the wither storm. Depending on how quick you left the Twilight Forest after getting your first Echo Shard will determine how quick the Witherstorm will be here. If you took a while, then you're not going to have much time. However, if you left well, within like 10 minutes or so, you'll have a whole 15 minutes to get away, which is roughly the same amount of time you had to get away from the first time, except now you're in the overworld. So essentially, you have a standard Witherstorm experience for the time being. So, explore around and look for new structures, such as the new revamped Ocean Monument, which now contains a chest with another explorer's treasure. Sooner or later, the Witherstorm will show up, and it will be chasing. I set its speed to be very low for demonstration purposes, since I didn't want it to eat up all my poster boards, but essentially, it will have roughly the same attacks from 4.5 and you will have to deal with the full 10 minute chase. Essentially, this will work exactly how summoning a Witherstorm in normal CWSM will. As in, depending on how long you took, if you left early 10, well, 15 minutes, which is roughly the same amount of time, essentially treat this as a normal chase. So, it's going to have its new bite damage, which will take almost half your health per hit. It will have its uh, scatter shot, which means it will be quite a bit harder to run away since it will be firing so many skulls. And then, of course, it will have its normal attacks and then the super cluster, which will attempt to take a bunch of blocks in front of you so that way you fall in a pit and then get tractor beamed. So of course, keep running as usual. With the wither storm now in the overworld, after your first chase, which will likely lead to a distraction if it ends within a thousand blocks of you, well, you will have a new thing to contend with. The Witherstorm now teleports in Phase 5. This is how it can cross dimensions. So essentially, any dimension you can think of, not safe, including the end. So keep that all in mind. The only place you're safe is the Nether, mainly because the Witherstorm wouldn't operate there. But essentially, if you hear bowels noises again, similar to the first time it appeared, then it's attempting to teleport. There are a few ways to prevent it though, since one, it won't occur unless you're pretty far away from it. So if you're really far away, then you might have to deal with a teleport. If you're outside of a very, very far radius, then it will instantly teleport. You'll figure that out as you go, but essentially you'll never make it that far on foot to reach the hard limit before it eventually teleports normally. So keep that all in mind. And then, once you hear all the bowels noises for about 60 seconds or so, it will appear. So keep that in mind. It will appear above you using whatever stats it had before, which means if it was chasing and then it teleported, you're gonna have a chasing witherstorm above you. The only condition is it will not be distracted when attempting a teleport, and it has a pretty long cooldown between teleports. If you've been away for a long time, then the Witherstorm will only decrease this timer if you get close to it. How close? Not allowed to say. I mean, which is the mod developer? 
but still, after a while, look up and you'll see a wither storm above you. So, major spoilers ahead, but now it's time to look at the explorer's treasures. Only 6 out of the 9 since 3 of them are past the symbiote stage, and are also quite different from the rest considering their power level. I'm responsible for one of them getting moved, but essentially, opening this chest, we have 6 items that I can show off and then the super TNT. You already saw the shield of a mile comes from the jungle temple, so that one's not very good, it's kind of outclassed by the bulwark of flame. The totem of undying can be combined with a charm of life and healing stone to make a charm of life level 2, which revives you with full health instead of 4 hearts. The neptune gloves, which gives some attack damage but also gives you some strong underwater mobility. Essentially, you might be able to swim away from the wither storm with it. And then, speaking of which, using said water mobility might help you get the iron bubble from a chest at the very top of a ocean monument. You could use a TNT to break in. However, if you don't kill the Elder Guardians, those 18, not 8, 18 gold blocks aren't for you anymore. And you want to use TNT. And then, something very powerful, the Ice Bow. The Ice Bow is unbreakable now, along with inflicting chilled on targets hit by it. What this means is, if you put infinity on it, you have a pretty much unstoppable ranged weapon. However, this bow cannot get flame, so it's going to be slightly weaker than the normal bow, but I think the slowness more than makes up for it. For the last one at this stage, besides the Super TNT, we have the Leviathan Blade, gotten from desert temples, which are now a very complicated structure, filled with puzzles and redstone and fighting a pharaoh mini-boss, but that one's really just a zombie with more armor. But each one of these is pretty useful, so, you know, think about what you need. Because the iron bubble, of course, allows you to get unlimited water breathing, so underwater caving's a lot easier, especially since diamond rates are a lot higher now. And with each of these, of course, you'll progress through your adventure. And also, the major one technically isn't an explorer's treasure, but the super TNT. We're ignoring the last three for now. One of them's OP, one of them is a required progression item for two dimensions, and then one is not very useful. But the Super TNT is critical, since now it summons the Withered Symbiote, making it completely required. No Formida Bombing now. To get said Super TNT, you have three methods to get the structure map in the overworld. You have the mineshaft, which is the longest, but probably easiest. So the real threat is the wither storm if you do this one. They have surface entrances now, and not to mention, they're gigantic. So you have to look around. If you see a small stone room, then you'll get yourself an explorer's map for the reanimated ruins. Of course, I said there are three. The other two are the spider den, shown here which is hard but very quick, so if you're able to brave the cave spiders and cobwebs, you can get yourself a pretty quick explorer's map if you break the wool in order to reveal the chests. There's also the catacombs, which is my personal choice, which will have a small entrance on the surface, designated usually by soul lantern, and then three layers. That one has a bunch of zombies, but is also decently quick, so any of these three options will work and they all lead you to the same structure, the reanimated ruins. There are three variants of this, the Badlands, the Snow, and the Swamp variant. The Badlands is the hardest, but it also has gold everywhere, some of it hidden inside the walls. So, make sure to keep a close eye, and these reanimated ruins hide some deep treasures, such as one, the Super TNT in this giant room right here, which will be instantly recognizable regardless. And then, for the other ones, you have strays to deal with, and then you have slimes for the swamp one. Swamp one's remarkably easy. There's also anvil and TNT traps. A couple of them will even have staircases, including 30 silverfish hidden inside. So, not necessarily the easiest structure, but definitely easier than most of the structures present. If going underground and only getting enchanted books, and some arrows, and maybe some broken anvils wasn't for you, well, there's another option. 
go to the Aether. The Aether, of course, is another dimension. You get it through glowstone in a water bucket. I mean, if you don't know the tale, then maybe do a little bit of research on it. But going through might seem like the perfect choice. Until you realize the Wither Storm will straight up ascend into the sky to catch you here. Do not try running away from it here, since if it starts chasing, good luck dealing with all the sky islands. If you are stuck here and there's a Wither Storm chasing, then use one of the clouds nearby to build a parachute. The golden ones are the best ones. The white ones will also produce some, but still and slowly drop down. They negate fall damage and give you slow falling, so keep that in mind too. There are four dungeons here and some nice ores. Gravitite gets you diamonds but pink pretty much, although you have to smelt them down. But still, really nice to have it all safely convenient here. But your job is to look for a bronze dungeon, which will present itself in the form of a small entrance. The other places are a little bit more difficult and don't give super TNT, but they have their own uses. So keep an eye out for Gravitite, Pink, and Sky Jade, which is green, which will get you some pretty basic armor, but there's a really nice sword from it that has 11 attack damage and only one use per second. So it's like a better axe, so keep that in mind. During this video, I'm not going to cover all the dungeons. I'm going to be covering the bronze and silver dungeons, since although the platinum is technically on this tier along with silver, still, it's quite difficult, so I don't recommend it. The gold dungeon is also post-symbiote, so keep that in mind. Only go for the temples and the bronze dungeon. Eventually, you'll find the bronze dungeon entrance under one of these islands. I definitely did not take two hours to find this before the developer made a hotfix to include their explorer map inside the platinum dungeon, but there will be some treasures in here. However, they aren't particularly good, since all the treasures are mostly contained within a living stone. No, not that stone, I'm talking about the slider in this room. This thing can only be damaged by pickaxe, and it will seal off the room if you try to escape. So, you know, don't try escaping. Get yourself a pickaxe, the strongest one you can get. So, diamond one will suffice for the fight. Get yourself strength potions for this, and then it will summon the slider. And this slider, well, it will fly around, and it will make funny sound effects when it hits you. So, it's a pretty tough boss fight but it gives some decent loot that you won't find inside the reanimated ruins, such as the sentry boots, which gives you a resistance to fall damage, well, complete immunity, and a cape that will give you immunity to slimes, well, aether slimes, called sweats. It will take a bunch of hits to take down, and it does have a second phase. This second phase involves a lot of crumbling in the arena, and it regenerating its health, so be careful. Once the fight is over, well, of course, that's going to be a little hard recovering, since that's a very tough boss. If you're struggling, place blocks in its way. It slows it down, and then strength potions will make you deal a lot more damage. And of course, set your spawn so that way you can revisit the arena. For our treasures, we have three major things. The two explorer's treasures, the sentry boots, which grant complete immunity to fall damage, a very useful thing. And then we have the sweat cape, which makes you immune to sweats and the ability to ride them. However, those are not very useful for riding. So essentially, that's immunity to sweats and just about it. And of course, the super TNT, which is incredibly powerful and can distract the wither storm, or you can use it to progress and summon a symbiote. So you want a symbiote? Get one of those, since it's required to progress. Here we have ourselves the Silver Dungeon, which will take the form of a giant floating temple. Really hard to miss. I don't really have any good footage of it, mainly because this is all a redo, since hooray, 30 minutes of footage all down the drain because of lack of audio. So all of this is being recorded in the future. But essentially, this dungeon has a bunch of Valkyries inside, very tough. 
I'd recommend getting at least diamond or gravitite before doing this. But once you've done it, then go through, get yourself 10 victory medals, and then you can challenge a Valkyrie Queen. And she is quite the opponent. Make sure to set your spawn, and then the fight can begin. You'll notice she deals a lot of damage. So, of course, you have to keep that in mind. But, fortunately, she has a pretty basic AI. Since she only really flies at you, afflicts slow falling, and summons lightning from time to time. So, should not be the hardest fight, especially if you have charms of life or poison potions, since she derives a lot of her from her high defense. So, make sure to throw a poison potion or two at her, and then the fight will go down pretty quick. Once she is defeated, she will drop a silver key, and this can be used to open the treasure vault in her dungeon. And this one is a bit more lucrative. Since it has two things that are very important, the golden feather, which may or may not be removed because I totally didn't cheese the final fight with it, and two, the hammer of King Bee Dogs, as in the real Minecraft developer, since he, in fact, made the mod originally. Along with that, some Valkyrie armor. You might get a little unlucky and get three pairs of boots and not the full armor set, but it is some really nice diamond armor, and it gives you some basic wings, along with immunity to fall damage if you have the full set and gloves. Overall, the Hammer of King Bee Dogs makes this fight worth enough, and the Golden Feather, although its existence is at stake for a most part, since a little bit of silliness I've caused with it, still is very useful due to it inflicting permanent slow falling, some lightning knives, and basic things. But the Hammer of King Bee Dogs cannot be understated. It is very, very powerful. Since you've gotten some pretty good items if you've done that dungeon, well, you have to think, what does it all do? Of course, the tools have obscenely long block reach, even if the sword version was re removed for balancing reasons. Still, the axe has a pretty nice synergy with most things, considering its 3.5 attack range, and the armor, like I stated, gives flight abilities. So, although you might be sacrificing a little bit of defense, still, you can see, pretty simple glide. Looks pretty nice too, even with my indecipherable skin. But still, fly around with it, you might be able to escape some nasty situations, and it makes parkour a bit easier. But you can see, it's not to be relied upon, because I fell down pretty quick. So, even if it gets outclassed by things like gravitite in the long run, Still, it's a worthwhile investment if you get a few pieces and are still stuck with something like normal gravitite or ironwood if you have no intentions of clearing the platinum dungeon. With the Super TNT in hand, regardless of what gear, as long as it's around ironwood grade, you should be able to take down the symbiote. Even if the symbiote has a bit more one-shot potential than usual because of something you see shortly, still, I'd say it's a little bit easier than normal. You place down the super canty, and then the wither storm will absorb it. And the wither storm will, of course, absorb it over time, summon the symbiote, and then the fight can begin. The wither storm will now move away from the area to give you space to fight it. And its beams will usually still be on, but be disabled for players engaging the symbiote. And what does this fight look like? Well, no more grab attack and a couple of other attacks have been tweaked. Also, no more skull attack. Because, have fun, the Wither Storm does it instead with its flaming skulls. For now, the normal phase one will be um, normal. You fight it exactly how you do it in normal CWSM. However, in phase two, its attacks become more powerful, such as the shulker bullets now inflicting clouds of levitation, and of course, the symbiote is a lot faster now. So be careful, even if it deals less damage in total, so it will speed up to a baby zombie speed. Once in phase 2, you will notice some other changes. Occasionally, it might drop some TNT while slamming, it's not really at this time, but still. And also, tentacles. They will appear around the arena in order to make uh, a lot more chaos. Not to mention, you can see the Wither Storm is now firing skulls in phase 2. 
So, be very careful since the tentacles will now start hitting you for extreme knockback. I managed to survive that one because the wither effect gave me immunity frames, but still, it will make the arena quite different to go. So, of course, time your hits well in order to shorten the fight as much as you can. And then, once you deal the final hit, something rather shocking will happen. Once the symbiote has taken its final hit, I totally didn't do it with commands in order to skip a lot of things for video reasons, it will start erupting tainted dust. And this tainted dust is uh, very valuable. But also, instead of giving you a book, it gives you a permit bomb now. And it's already lit, so have fun with it. The wither storm is temporarily disabled, so use this time to get away. But if you get too far away, the wither storm might not get hit by it. Fortunately, super TNT and 8 tainted dust will net you another permit bomb. So don't worry about that. But escape the red particle radius, and then make sure the wither storm doesn't beam you back into its range, since it will try sucking you up right into the permitted bomb's range. With the wither storm now downed, you now have your time in the overworld without the wither storm's presence constantly annoying you. How much time? Oh, three minutes. That's all you get now. Yep. No more frolicking around, the wither storm is going to immediately come back with a new and improved chase. First, come in, and then activate it like normal, and this fight is going to be quite hilarious, since when no more changes to the symbiote, the symbiote isn't going to be useful anymore. So, what you need to do is run. You might have to run through the minefield you call your symbiote arena, but it has no more tackle room to kill it being on the edge per segment, but of course, it's raining skulls, and a lot of them at that. So be careful since the amount of skulls is going to obliterate you, and it will now attempt to take massive amounts of blocks from in front of you, which makes the chase all the more difficult. And as long as you keep running, you should be safe as long as you avoid the skulls. Since, unlike in earlier phases, which is pretty easy to get away from as long as you run in a straight line, but this time, it's not so easy. Even if the wither storm isn't chasing because I set its speed to be very low, it's still going to get you. So, when you think you're safe, nope, you get blown up. So, this will last 3 minutes before it changes to phase 6.5, where it becomes its most dangerous, since it will have 9 heads. From here, It'll be, well, incredibly dangerous, and you'll start the next segment of your journey. Now, we're in the nether. It's no longer required in progression, but a lot of the rules still apply here. Since, of course, building a base here will make you safe from the wither storm, as long as you don't place your portal inside the base, since the wither storm will attempt to shoot skulls into it from time to time. Whether that's intentional or not, I don't know but always pay a little bit of caution to that. So, Soul Sand Valley's now summoned Wither Skeletons. Bastions have different loot, such as the Flaming Gemstone, a weak charm, that sets enemies that attack you on fire, and some fiery blood. And then, we have the Soul Prison. And it's a thing you see right here. Two Infernal Revenants guard it, which drop netherite scraps, pretty tough mini bosses. But if you manage to brave the thing, you'll get the Soul Cannon. And this thing is very valuable. Also, you get a charm of life. But fire it. The wither storm's beams will focus in on that location, allowing you to indefinitely kite the wither storm. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember please like and subscribe, and don't forget to try out Explorer's Eve. Link will be in the description. So. This is a voiceover video, so keep that in mind. Maybe I'll start doing this more often. But enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out.